right, so when it comes to spoken language, we're almost done. The last section in the spoken language part of this unit is on the pragmatics of language. And this is really the social norms around language. This is the idea that infants as young as two weeks of age will begin cooing, but will coo in a turn-taking fashion. This is the idea when you say something to an infant and then pause, that's when they will usually begin to vocalize. As we get a little bit older, we also get more mature in our pragmatic skills. Toddlers learn it's not just about speaking, but trying to speak effectively. They know that they're expecting their listener to respond. They may not know yet what makes a good response versus a poor response, but they know that they're supposed to say something and then wait for the other person to respond. Toddlers, however, though, what they are saying usually isn't something that the audience is so much interested in. They tend to do monologues or really present lots of egocentric conversations where they'll just talk about themselves or talk about the toy they're playing with. They're not really asking how the other person is or what the other person thinks yet. They're just really talking about what's going on. As we move into the preschool years, ages three to four to five, we can really see this adjustment. We start to adjust how what we're saying for the listener. If we're talking to another kid versus talking to another adult versus talking to an unfamiliar adult, we tend to say different things. This can even include using infant directed speech if we're talking to a smaller infant or a younger sibling. And in these preschool years, when we hear the response, if there's something that we didn't agree with or if we don't think they understood us completely, we will try to correct these misunderstandings. So in typically developing kids, this is something becomes very mature very early on. However, there is some exceptions. For kids that are socially anxious or sometimes shy, their language skills might be, might be presented in a slightly different way. For instance, we know that really shy kids tend to speak less often. The frequency of how often they talk is markedly decreased. Not only will they try and speak less often, but when they do speak, they'll try and say less words. They'll keep their sentences shorter. They might use telegraphic speech or one word replies. This can often happen in a conversation where we're trying to do what's known as volleying. Think about a volleyball and you're trying to a really good volleyball game with two skilled players. The ball may not touch the ground for a long point in time. And conversation skills can work the same way. It's the idea that one person says something to start the conversation, the other person responds, and it goes back and forth like this. Well, shy individuals tend to drop the ball a lot. They will end the conversation with a one word response where the other person doesn't really have much to build on. In addition to that, they also tend to use less diverse words. They're not just using less words overall, but the amount of words they use are fewer. They display a smaller vocabulary than their non-shy peers. And this even includes when we look at the word stems and how the words start. And finally, in terms of pragmatics, they really use a smaller, lower volume. A lot of shy individuals speak at an almost inaudible level that shows they don't really take the perspective of the audience. They're not doing the work to ensure they're heard by their audience. And their tone is usually very flat or very nervous, and they have more difficulty with their intonation. So shy kids often need a lot of explicit training, particularly when it comes to how they should respond, how they shouldn't drop the ball in conversation, and how to speak at a more audible level. But they're not the only group that we need to mention. We also have to acknowledge that people on the autism spectrum often struggle with language, particularly with non-literal speech. This can be things like metaphors. If you say, this blew my mind, or you could cut the air with a knife. They may not understand what that is unless somebody has previously explained that metaphor explicitly to them. In addition, social memes like, how's it going? What you got on today? They may think of that in a more literal sense. It may struggle to respond to that in the way others may. Individuals with autism may also struggle with some of the pragmatics like turn-taking, like making eye contact, like not interrupting other people and staying in appropriate conversational distance from other people. Now, pragmatics can differ from culture to culture. In some cultures, it's more acceptable to speak very closely or to speak at a more distance or to use your hands or to not use your hands or to be more reserved. And so pragmatics is something that really has to do with the social norms in the culture we're in. And so this may be something that a person on the autism spectrum may struggle with, particularly when they're in a new environment, like a new workplace or a new school environment. But overall, that was the ins and outs of spoken language. That's the bulk of this unit. And next we're gonna move on to signed and written language.